Let's say good morning to our co-hosts on the day, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Hi. <laughs> you remembered. <laughs> he gave me grief last time for talking too much on my introduction. Uh, so I've started saying just hi. That was beautiful. <laughs> got a lump in my throat. To tear my the, guy can, eyes. the guy can take instructions. He's so coachable. He just is so he coachable. Is. Also, uh, Maria Lawrence, and good morning, Maria. Good morning. Good to be here. Great to have you. You know, I was uh, I go home a lot of times through Shepherdstown and then down through uh, Sharpsburg, Boonesboro, turn right. Well, there used to be the the lady, the author that uh, that has the inn there in Boonesboro, Nora Roberts. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. I guess her son had opened a restaurant right across the street, on the same side of the street, but right across the little alleyway that's there. But then it closed. And it finally they were like doing re, kind of work on it, and they reopened it, and, or they're getting close to reopening it. And I drive by and I see the sign on the hanging from the front, and it says, The Admiral. I mean, Bill bought a restaurant? <laughs> this is awesome. I'll, I can eat for free now. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Don't jump to that conclusion. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, you can eat free lunch every day the rest of my life. He's not going to charge his buddy, is he? Is he? You he might you charge your buddy, wouldn't you? Know? That, that's a question. Of, <laughs> that question will remain unanswered until the situation actually occurs. Then we'll know for proof. So this is not your place, then. The admiral is not. It's uh, not my place. I, I but it's, got, it's a family enclave there. Uh, her husband owns a bookstore across the street, and of course, a big restaurant and I mean, big uh, hotel. Yeah, it's she's taking over Boonesboro. Well, it's a lovely little town. Uh, our uh, guest to open up the segment here is the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles, who also, by the way, will be making some appearances in the very near future regarding the home show, which is just uh, not that Around far away corner. now. Right. Kev, good morning to you, man. Hi. <laughs> see, Bill, see, see what you've done, Rob. This is wonderful. <laughs> you, you have more time to talk yourself now. It cuts down on a lot of uh, extraneous stuff. Yeah. I, I think it cleans up the show and now, tightens now, it. Now, if you can get Maria to follow suit, Not then you have all. it made. Not at all. You guys are going to be quiet, so I can just have at. Now, I do need you to move your microphone more in front of your face there, okay. Maria, so we can actually We didn't do that hear you beforehand. Yeah, okay. So you're good Am I good? Now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Kev, uh, in the uh, newspaper, it looks like the city is combined with a few other government agencies to apply for a grant, a pretty big one, too, about $20 million from what I, I see that could uh, change the landscape of the city a lot faster than some had thought. Well, you're right. It's called the RAISE grant, and it, it's a, a game changer. I mean, we've seen a lot of great changes here in the city of Martinsburg over the last couple of years, and and a lot of plans moving forward, but those plans would be in segments. And what this will do is be able to put these segments into one big project to be able to move this uh, to fruition much quicker, much faster. Um, it's a federal grant, uh, so I believe that it was supposed to be in uh, either the other day or, or Friday, and it has been submitted. And now we, we need to just uh, go and lobby our uh, our federal representatives and uh, hopefully and, and pray that you know that Martinsburg has seen fit to to get this grant and I can't say enough for uh, Andy Blake Andy Blake is uh, uh, we were just talking earlier he he, he's, he he loves to write so he's very good at, at doing research and and being able to uh, put it eloquently in words that uh, the grant people will be able to look at and say, hey, this is something we really need to take a look at. So we're he, really excited about he it. He really does convey the need very well. And um, also he um, he sought support from a really wide variety of people for those letters of support. And I know... Did you issue from, one? Yeah, yeah. I know from um, the grant writing process that, that that's a really valuable piece if you've got... You know the nonprofit community and the business community, and you know everybody in between is is writing you letters of support. Too. Yeah, and so. you're right, and it just goes to show that uh, you know the people are supporting the uh, everything that's happening in, in the in, in the city of Martinsburg, not only the the citizens themselves, but the business owners and outside agencies, and also you know the county is, is also partnering up with us to be able to make this happen. 
Is it a match grant? Do you, will the city have to pay anything? I don't believe it's a match grant. Uh, I, I can't say. F uh, no, it's not a match grant. We're not going to put up twenty million dollars to get twenty million dollars. But uh, no, you never put up twenty million dollars. But you may have to put up twenty percent or fifteen percent. I couldn't, whatever. to be quite honest, Bill. I, I don't okay. know if there's any any match grant at all. I've not been part of a conversation that was mentioned, and I've been part of most of those conversations. Yeah, most federal grants do have a match. It may be coming. The match may be from the state, though. Who knows? It, it could be because the state is also. We've we solicited the state to be able to uh, yeah. support us in this. Now, also. according to the journal, let me give you some detail about this too. And Kevin, you can fill in the blanks along the way here, uh, because the journal article is quoting you. Uh, if selected, the Martinsburg Greenway Trail Project could receive $20 million in funding through the RAISE program. This would allow the project to move forward faster than piecing out the work. If approved, it will connect the Frog Hollow Trail to the Raleigh Street Extension Trail. It would also connect to War Memorial Park, Oatsdale Park, Oak Street Park, Peel Faulkner Park, and Charlotte Prather Park. And then you're quoted as saying it's going to be something that's going to connect and utilize partnerships between the county parks and rec and the county to be able to put this trail all together. And there's also some environmental work proposed to help improve the creeks in the city. And you mentioned uh, something about tearing down small buildings. Can you get in some detail about that? Well, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, an opportunity here that if we're going to be um, creating this trail and creating this uh, creekside um, vision that we have, that uh, if you've seen the, the creek down in, in, in the city, it's beautiful but there needs to be some work done on it. it needs to be cleaned out we need to start uh, working on the erosion problems that we're having on the the creek sides of of the of the creek because it's starting to cave in some of the parking lots to the left and as far as any buildings i don't have anything specific as far as buildings that that would need to be torn down or anything like that but uh you know the just the vision of itself to be able to you know start at at, at um uh, Lake Thomas, and to be able to end up in, in Charlestown uh, in a much faster vision and uh, process uh, because of this grant is just a, just phenomenal. Kevin, there's been some proposal of having trails beside Tuscarora Creek for several years now. There's always been a lot of pushback from the, the residents <clears throat> against the creek. And uh, everywhere, every time a trail is proposed, the residents are object to it because they, they're go, their property is going to be exposed to a whole range of individuals. Uh, have you heard anything back from the residents in this case? Well, actually, you know, we've we already have come into agreements with with several mm -hmm. different properties. Uh, a couple being uh, uh, P.J. Orsini and Dan Dolier have a a project that they're doing down off of Maple Street, and we also have Aspen Hall that has uh, given us the right of way to come mm -hmm. through Aspen Hall. So those are some of our big were, would have been some of our biggest obstacles, and and as far as any of the others. Uh, as, as we get along in the path, and then I'm sure that um, we'll be able to address those as we come up. Forward. Well, and I don't mean to circle back to something that happened 25, 30 years ago, but the residents, not the not the ones developing something for uh, for business purposes, but the actual uh, citizen residents felt they had been not part of the uh, the discussion until way too late. And as a result, they were very much against it. They were adamant against it and shot it down. Uh, probably, we probably would have seen this 20 years or so ago, except the residents were adamantly opposed to it. Well, I, I can't speak to that because yeah. I'm only yeah. in town here about 20 years, but uh, I know that the process of everything that we've been doing as far as the vision with CEC making all of the presentations, that this has been out there. This has been out there for the public to view. They've been able to see the plans. We've had uh, public input, and, and we've had public meetings uh, based on that over the period of time, each for each one of these small individual projects that we're planning. Mm -hmm. So um, if someone is, is has not heard about it, feel free to contact myself or Andy Blake at, at City Hall. But... You know, we've used every media outlet that we sure. have to be able to make that happen. The Martinsburg, and, and, one second, Maria. The Martinsburg Greenway Trail project consists of 6.2 miles of paved, 10-foot wide, ADA-compliant pedestrian and bicycle shared use paths that follow the natural blends of the Tuscarora Creek. The project will connect multiple city parks, schools, and existing disjointed trails to key local and regional destinations. That, again, from the journal article in the, the newspaper, which quotes Mayor Kevin Knowles. Go ahead, Maria. Well, I was just going to say, from someone that literally this is in my backyard, 
Um, you know, I feel like the city has been upfront and talking about it. And, you know, I've talked to um, Andy Blake a number of times and obviously to the mayor. Um, but yeah, Lake Thomas is is literally my backyard. Um, so, <laughs> so I was just, we were, you know, and, and the piece of West Race Street there actually is a dead end, um, which is interesting on the 4th of July because no one realizes that it doesn't connect to the other part of West Race Street. But anyway, um, you know, so I feel like from from the neighborhood perspective, are there going to be changes? Of course. Are there going to be um, more pedestrians in the area? Of course. But, you know, this is just such a wonderful project from the standpoint of outdoor recreation and um, community health and wellness that um, that I think that that we should be obliged to to be um, excited about it and we are yeah so. and, and you know we've taken all that into consideration with the conversation that we've had with you know Marie and people in her neighborhood and other neighborhoods that when we designed like entrance ways as far as parking and that we've taken that into consideration because we don't want to overload the neighborhoods with a lot of traffic or, or, or um, car, motor vehicle traffic coming through their neighborhood. So we've been able to outline that so that that parking area is going to be in an area that's not going to affect anybody in the residential areas. What's the timeline, Kevin? You mentioned you hope to uh, hear something well, late spring, it, early summer. After that, if you were to get the contract, is there a schedule timeline uh, laid out? I, I would say that uh, June is when we're supposed to hear about it, is what I'm told. And and once June hits, I would imagine, you know, we're already ahead of the game because we've already have the plans and everything to move forward. So it would just be a matter of putting stuff out to bid to be able to, to get it moving. So sooner rather than later on, on a big uh, $20 million project like this than, than if we had a piece up in to, you know, half million or million dollar projects throughout the uh, period of time. Kevin, I realize it's not in your, uh, in your domain now, but is it is it related at all to the improvement of Route 9 going west? Have you heard anything? I know this particular project is not contingent on it, but have you heard anything about the Route 9 improvement? I have. Uh, you know what? I have not heard anything. It's been probably good. I haven't heard anything from down, down at the state capitol during this session, so I really haven't heard anything about any movement moving forward uh, in that area. But I, I've had other people ask me, about would we be looking to extend trails up towards uh, uh, Morgan County, some to the CNO Canal and all that, and, and you know those are those are things that uh, would take a, a, a large contingency of partners to make that happen. I mean, is the city of Martinsburg in favor of something like that? You know, with, with the right with the right uh, uh, the right partnerships. Yeah, I think that's something that we could work with. Mayor Kevin Knowles, our guest here on the program. This grant, by the way, that the city is applying for, it hasn't been awarded yet. They'll find out the news on this at the end of June. Is that the deal? That's uh, that's the, my understanding at this point, yes. Yeah, uh, Kevin, do you know, is the grant uh, a possibility as all or nothing, or are there options that they might give you 50%, for instance? I, I You know what? We're going for all of it, so I'm, I'm going to say all or nothing, but... Uh, you know, I have no idea how they would break that up if and, they did. And I think, as a rule, funders—I you know. don't know about the the federal government, but certainly private foundations, yeah. so on and so forth—are likely to give you some portion rather than the whole kit and caboodle. But again, if you know, if the needs conveyed and and it's a great project, then then why not? Like you said. Well, look, I mean, look, look, when Andy Blake was at uh, Ranson, look what they did, were able to do down there with the, 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 the monies that they were able to get through grants to be able to build their infrastructure, their streets, their streetscape and everything in that area. So we're very, we're very confident that, uh, you know, if anything, we're, we're in the top running of being able to, to secure this grant uh, do, based on the information and, and everything that we have. Do you have any idea who you're competing against? Is it uh, statewide, uh, nationwide, or what? Do you have any of the parameters of the grant? I, I don't believe, and you know maybe Andy does because he's more detailed into it than I am. But uh, I don't believe that there's a list of who's who's out there as of yet because uh, everybody just had to have their stuff in by 
you know, I think it was either Monday or last Friday. So really you wouldn't know who is applying it until it's applied. No, I, I, that was not my question. My question was, uh, what is the scope of the solicitation? Is it is it very focused on who they solicited from, or is it a nationwide solicitation? That I couldn't tell okay. you, to be honest. Kevin, I know that uh, you've been very involved with the municipalities of the state of West Virginia. In the past, you've been the president of the association, and you spent time in Charleston talking to delegates and senators uh, in regards to what they're doing in the capital. I know you've done this for years. This has been a fairly quiet legislative session until about the last 24 hours or so, and it started to get pretty busy, and it, it will get very busy now over the last week and a half that they have remaining down there. Uh, in your most recent trip there, what were some of the things that were on your plate as concerns and uh, things that uh, you maybe would like to see moved forward? Well, you know, uh, the municipalities and the municipal league, you know, we're, we're always there to answer any questions that they may have if it if any legislation involves municipalities. And really nothing has uh, jumped out. Uh, there is some pension talk about uh, fire and police and and you know we can see how things like that go and and there was a supreme court um uh ruling that that may may have or may not have affected a um a, a, a lawsuit that we had uh that we had um, settled on with, with the fire department but uh nothing nothing that really jumps out that says hey you know what we better get on our, our phones, we had to get down to Charleston and talk to the people that are there. So, again, uh, I think, you know, I think the legislators are, are looking at what they're supposed to be looking at, and they're doing a great job doing it and allowing, at least allowing at this point, the cities to do what they need to do to prosper. Because any, if you take a look at any of the big cities that, you know, they're all thriving. They're they're starting to grow. They're starting to grow in population. You have you have two, two large mayors that are running for one for governor and another one for U.S. Senate. So, you know, we must be doing something right. You know, we must be doing something right. What's your relationship like with the mayor of Wheeling? He had many good no, things to say you know about what? you. He is actually, I consider him a very, very good friend. Uh, he, he and uh, Steve Williams. But uh, I, I had the opportunity to award him uh, the mayor of the year through the Municipal League. So it was, it was an honor for me to be able to do that for a friend of mine. And, and he, he has some ties here locally, some friends that he has. And he worked for Senator Byrd years ago right. and and uh so he's a he has a lot going for him and uh i think he uh will bring a lot to the table when on, it comes time on the clout meter what what cities you know west virginia is a small state the state itself has less population than many of the largest cities in this country do on the clout meter which cities in martinsburg rate when they talk when the mayor of those cities talk everyone pays attention it what, moves what's, the needle. what city in what cities west in west virginia, virginia okay. yeah well, uh, you know, they, they, they listen to Martinsburg, they listen to Wheeling, they listen to Huntington and, and Charleston. And uh, you know, Morgantown comes in the picture. Very strong mayor in Parkersburg uh, who's involved in the First Foundation. He, he sits on the First Foundation board. So, you know, it's typically your top five or top six cities in population that people would, would stand up and listen. But to, to keep in mind, there's a lot of smaller cities and communities in the state of West Virginia that are doing great, great, great things. And, and that's the, the, the good good news about being part of the Municipal League is we get to hear that. And just because it might be on a smaller scale doesn't mean it's not something that can be brought into uh, uh, into uh, the bigger cities. You know, I mean, Somersville. Somersville now just... Hit, hit a home run. They, they, I believe, they just got uh, their national park status at mm -hmm. Great Gorge there, and that's a huge deal for them. Was home rule a big thing to get in turning some of these cities around? Oh, well, most definitely, and yeah, most definitely. And, you know, there was a lot of a lot of uh, smaller municipalities that were having problems with their water, water and sewer systems, and and different infrastructure that this was able to help with. So, yeah, it was. A, it's been a huge deal. Kevin, let me go back to the grant for just a couple of seconds. Uh, uh, one of our listeners just uh, raised a question about some of the potential downstream problems. Uh, when you write a grant, uh, do you put in how it's policed and how it's maintained? 
or is the grant strictly for the construction and the, the initial completion? Bill, you know, uh, I couldn't speak to that. I, I didn't write the grant uh, as part of conversations, but as far as the details of what, what needs to be policed or how it's maintained or anything, is that's a question I couldn't answer to sure. be quite honest. It was from Chris Montgomery. It says, this all sounds good, I presume he means about the trails, but what happens when the homeless camps start setting up along these trails, not to mention all the extra litter that'll end up in the creek? Just some thoughts I have. What, you know what, uh, the, we've had the trail system that we have there now. We're not, we haven't had any problems with any homeless or any, any garbage or anything with that. And, and, and we see that we see that the, the that we would have the same non-issues uh, if we extend our trails. Our trails are monitored. Uh, we do have maintenance that goes through there every day. We do have police presence there on, on a regular basis through a 24-hour period. Uh, we will be looking to put some type of... Uh, possibly some solar lighting there so that, uh, you know, when people are walking by, the lights will emote like a motion-type detector. And, you know, the the, the city has invested uh, through the police department uh, several cameras for throughout the city. So uh, I, I would imagine and, and would hope that you would see probably some camera trails, videos there and all that. So I, I think the city has done everything they can to uh, help, you know, keep in mind, uh, you know, the homeless are people too, and you know we 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 don't want to criminalize homelessness. Uh, it's a uh, it's mental health, it's substance abuse disorder, and we just have to work on finding uh, ways to to help them uh, move along in their lives also. And obviously, you would only have jurisdiction over the trails in the city. That's that's correct. So anything that crosses over there goes into the county at that point. Uh, last chance to uh, get out any city news that you want to. Then I'm going to ask you to switch hats and promote the home show because it's on a different date in a different month this year. Well, any- well, we know that we have one of our one of our biggest events coming up here in March, and St. Pat. I have to say St. Patty's Day because it's a, one of my favorite days, and you know that's on uh, March 16th, and that's going to be uh, a huge event. Uh, Robbie Blair does a fabulous job. Main Street puts on a, a great event, and 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 you know we're, we just keep seeing those events grow and grow and grow to a point that you know we're, we're looking for places to park, and we're going to have to start thinking about that. So that's the 16th and 17th. It's just the 16th. Just the 16th. And right. what will the city do specifically for that? Will the restaurants open? Up? What are the plans for St. Patty's? Well, you know, um, the the city partners up with Main Street to supply, you know, the police presence, the closing of streets, the the picking up of garbage. So, uh, if you ever ever been to an event in 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 downtown Martinsburg, you don't find litter all over the place, and and your very safe atmosphere. And once the event is over, half hour later, it looks like there's nobody been there mm-hmm. after they break down and go away because our our city. Department of Public Works does a fabulous job. Jeff and his crew, they do a fabulous job in, in cleaning up after an event and, and keeping the city clean on a daily basis. And I'm sure um, I've been the year that it was like 75 degrees. <laughs> I don't think it was last year. It was maybe the year before the St. Patrick's Day event. But food trucks, um, food, uh, food beverage trucks, trucks uh, as well. So it's not something necessarily that the restaurants would open for well the restaurant the restaurants are open i mean okay. well, they'll be open because i can tell you that uh any big event that we've had the restaurants are, are full also because there's only so much time to stand in front truck. of a food truck and, yeah. and you know i know myself that i'm not going to stand in a line for 20 minutes to wait for a hot dog when i can go into a restaurant and sit down and have somebody wait on me but mm-hmm. but that's you know that's me but uh you know there's a a variety of events, Irish music, they're going to have Irish dancing. Dance. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's really exciting to be able to uh, uh, be able to witness that and be part of something like that, that at least for me has been part of my life since since I was a little boy. All right, home show. Before home you get show. Out, before you get out of here, we got about two minutes. Uh, uh, he, he, he's allowing me to talk about home show. I am the executive officer of the, the Eastern Pan Home Builders Association. Our biggest fundraiser uh, event is uh, the home show, and usually it's in March. It's not this year because we're uh, God has done us a favor and placed Easter on the same weekend, so we're going to push it into April with the hopes of being able to get better weather, and, and we'll be at the, the Roundhouse again. We'll be there for another two, three years, and uh, last year we saw 5,200 people come through. The year before, 5,000 people, and it, it shows that once this 
this venue is going to be an opportunity for us to grow within the inner city. We can't thank our sponsors enough, Pine Creek Struct Structures, who is our pla our diamond sponsor. Uh, you know, without the sponsorships, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do in Charleston uh, for the Home Builders Association, not only of Eastern Panhandle, but also for uh, the state of West Virginia. What's the date? You mentioned April. A April 6th and April 7th. Yeah, I, I better give the date on it. <laughs> yeah. Bill, thank you. you and that should you be... You did say week after Easter. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got, but yeah, yeah, April 6th, April 7th, it'll be from uh, 10 to 6 on Saturday. Saturday and uh, 10 to 4 on Sunday. There will be parking available not on site, also throughout the city, and we will have a shuttle with uh, the EPBA. We'll be able to, uh, uh, Eastern Panel Transit Authority will be able to uh, uh, pick you up and bring you down uh, if you park anywhere in the city. And as you say, it should be a little bit warmer then. We've been, that's been our, there those that's times hopes in the March when well, it's just a little yeah, chilly that, that, inside. That first one was a week after oh. that 75 degree weather that the event was and and it was probably 30 degrees or below that uh for that <laughs> weekend and it was cold yeah, i think cold you were there inside. yeah Robin. And, and, and then last year it was nice but it was rainy and muddy and mm -hmm. robbie blair has said everybody should follow them on the the main street martinsburg web page or page so they got a lot of activities going yes on. so yeah they 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 get they're always doing something they're always doing something kev good to see you again good to good to be here any final words I just want to tell everybody that and I tell them all the time, keep your eyes and ears open. Martinsburg's moving forward real quick, real fast, so get on board. Thanks for coming in, man. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see you guys.